Hello and welcome to HT Worship Together service. My name is Ollie Benyon and I am one of the associate vicars here. Now many of you will be aware that today was meant to be the day we say goodbye to our vicar Rupert as he and Liz move to London where Rupert becomes the vicar of St Michael's Chester Square. Today is meant to be a day of celebration of saying a massive thank you to Rupert and Liz and the entire Charkham family for all they've poured into our church family over the last 17 years. But sadly, that is just not possible. Now, Rupert is currently in intensive care after contracting COVID-19. So for now, we're going to push pause on our plans and we look forward to a day when we'll be able to welcome the Charkham family back to our HT building where we can all be together and we can thank them properly for all that they've poured into us over those years. And we'll be praying for them a little later on in our service as they, they navigate this turbulent time as a family. So just to tell you a few things that are coming up or going on in the HT community. Uh, many of you, you've received uh, an email from me uh, about prayer and we want there's so many ways we can be praying at the moment isn't there but one one opportunity is for, to be part of our prayer email um, so far we've been praying for the charcoms but as time goes on we're going to be praying for different different needs that are going on um, as, this, as this crisis continues so if you aren't on that um, please do um, sign up you can do that on our web page and we're also having a, a prayer evenings on Wednesday nights. And it was so encouraging to be part of that last Wednesday where well over 100 people came together to, to, to pray, to seek God in this particularly challenging time. And so if you, if you weren't there, uh, I do encourage you to join us this Wednesday, 8 o'clock, and I'll be sending out more details about um, how to log in in the week. We've also received an email about our care plan. Now, this is an opportunity for us as a church family to be to be supporting one another and in that plan we're looking at ways of, of doing that by maybe through through phone calls one way is it's very simple if you're feeling isolated and would really appreciate a phone call every so often that's one option we're also thinking about practical ways we can support each other maybe some bringing food around to, to people's houses or, or other things like that or through obviously through prayer such a key part of it um, and we're also including um, creating some new types of um, home groups, which are called connect groups. These are, are small little groups that are going to exist over this challenging season for prayer, for, for reading the Bible and doing, thing, doing all that over, over social media. If you didn't receive any of those emails, and that may be because we haven't got your details on our database or we, we haven't got um, GDPR permissions to, to email you. So why don't you go to our welcome page, fill in our, one of our welcome forms and uh, we'll start, soon be able to start communicating with you through, through emails. Well, we're going to come uh, into our time of worship. As normal, we have our resource page. Please do use that. There's lots of kids resources, worship resources, prayer resources. Do use that. But we're gonna, as we spend time now, we're going to, uh, we're gonna come into a time of worship. With Ed Smith is going to lead us in worship, and a little later on, uh, Stuart Browning is going to be opening the Word uh, for us. So let's just pray as we come and uh, worship the Lord. Lord, we we welcome you here. Uh, no matter what is going on in the world, how. Uh, traumatic things may seem Lord we, we know we can come to you you are our rock you are our shelter Lord and we, 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 we hold on to that truth Lord help us to, to lift our eyes and to focus on you help us to, to feel like a community even though we may be separated in different places help us to feel like we are a, a, a church come together we ask this in your name Amen Our 
God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Make way before the King of Kings The God who comes to save Is he to set the captives free Who can stop the Lord Almighty Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battles Every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb The Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him Can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the God. 
high Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You never fail And you won't start now So I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine oh. Yes, you are mine Heaven's peace, 
and perfect justice kiss this guilty world in love so let us all thy love accepting love the ever all our days let us And our lives be to His praise. He alone shall be our glory. Nothing in this world we seek. He has cleansed and sanctified us. He Himself has set us free. Nothing in this world we see He has cleansed and sanctified us He himself has set us free Yes, He himself has set us free Yes, He himself has set us free Yeah, God, we thank you that um, you have set us free. And Lord, we pray for um, boldness and courage in these times of difficulty and trial. And may we know that our help comes from you and you alone. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Sunday message for HT Online this week. Uh, it's uh, you know, joining me in my house here, my little office at home, and I'm sure you guys are joining from uh, all across uh, many parts of the city. And a really big welcome, especially if you're new to HT, uh, you've not joined us before. It's uh, lovely to have you. My name's Stuart. I'm one of the associate vicars here. And obviously, we are coming up to Easter soon. Um, we're really looking forward to our Good Friday service and also to our Easter Day so, uh, service so look out for those <clears throat> but the thing I want to look at this morning is the topic of where as Christians we draw our strength and our comfort from where do we draw our strength and comfort from uh, during these difficult times I don't know if you have heard uh, the widely told story of the Sheldonian theatre in Oxford apparently when it was commissioned in 1664 by Bishop Gilbert. It was a quite outlandish design. Um, there was meant to be a huge 70-foot uh, span um, that the, the roof was supposed to um, cover and they hadn't uh, built uh, a roof that big before that didn't need uh, big load-bearing columns down the centre of the theatre. But of course um, having big columns down the centre of the theatre would ruin the, uh, the mood. Um, so when they gave the design to Sir Christopher Wren, many of you will have heard of him, famous architect, um, it was a big challenge, but uh, he, he, he leapt at it and he came up with a, a brand new groundbreaking design for a roof that could hold its own weight and didn't need any load-bearing columns down the middle. The thing was though, uh, as the story is told, uh, Bishop Gilbert uh, lost his nerve at the last minute. And he just didn't believe that the design could hold its own weight. And so, uh, because he paid for it all, he demanded Wren add some load-bearing columns in uh, to support the roof. There was a lot of argument and complaint, but eventually Wren agreed to put the columns in. Except he didn't, because uh, many years later, when uh, a restoration was done and they went up, uh, they discovered that uh, the columns didn't go all the way up to the ceiling. Wren, knowing that his design was sound and would hold its own weight, had left a gap um, between the columns and the ceiling. Um, they, they weren't required to hold up uh, the weight of the ceiling. Now, I am informed that that story is only half true, even though I've heard it many times from many people. 
Um, but the image of those columns has really stuck with me over the last few weeks, just thinking about it and speaking to a lot of, uh, a lot of people, a lot of you. Many of us at the moment have, have, have a sense of a uh, great expectation on us to bear a lot of weight. Maybe it's the weight of uh, uh, things in our own lives that are challenging us. Maybe it's the weight uh, of work, uh, whether it's going in um, to work in a hospital or caring for people. Maybe it's uh, the weight of just totally reorganising our work life or looking after family now that they're at home. Uh, or maybe it's the weight of, of caring for others. We feel like there's the expectation that we need to be strong to carry the weight of others through this time. Whatever it is, we find the expectation to be load-bearing columns in our lives. And yet, we also feel a bit like frauds. Uh, we feel like those columns that um, we know we actually can't hold up the weight of what's, uh, what's above us. And we need help. Well, today I want us to look at a passage in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11. Because... In this little passage, Paul talks exactly about this challenge, the challenge of bearing up under pressure, the challenge of where our strength and comfort comes from, the challenge of how we can be strong for other people. So if you've got a Bible, why don't you grab it now? I'm going to grab mine and find one, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and I'm just going to read for us, and then I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to look at this together. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that, we will continue, that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favour granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for how it points us towards you and the strength you have and the comfort you have for us. And we pray you would equip us to lean on you this morning. Amen. Well, this might surprise you, might not, but um, I used to be embarrassed of asking God for help. Maybe you've experienced this yourself. Um, when I didn't have this problem when I was a young or new Christian. I think back then I just got that I... Uh, needed God's help. I was going to need his help uh, in lots of ways and it was easy to come to him. But then as I uh, matured in my faith, or at least I thought I was maturing in my faith, I began to uh, become embarrassed about constantly needing to come back to God and ask for his help or his forgiveness or his comfort or encouragement. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess in, in the back of my mind, every time I was coming to God, I, I had this kind of sense of, Lord, I, I'm really sorry I need to be back here again so soon. You know, uh, you know, uh, if you could just help me out this w once more and then uh, get me back on my feet and, uh, and I'll, I'll sort myself out and I won't need, need to be back here anytime soon. I guess I, I thought that the more mature I became as a Christian, the less I would need to come to God for help. But I've come to seem that 
I couldn't have had it more backwards. I could have ha couldn't have had it more wrong. And I hope that what we'll see this morning is that we never grow out of needing to come to our Father for strength and for comfort and encouragement. And I want us to notice a few things to that effect in our passage today. Um, I want us to notice a few things about the Apostle Paul, because if you think about it, we have to remember that Paul is pretty much one of the most uh, capable, one of the most mature, uh, one of the most no-nonsense Christians that you could ever find. Um, and so I found it really helpful to just notice a few things about what he says to the Corinthians here. First of all, I fi find it helpful to note that Paul knows what it's like to be under great pressure. Um, he says in verse 8, he says to them, uh, I don't want you to be uninformed about the troubles that we experienced. He tells them about the very great pressure that he and his colleagues were under in Asia. He doesn't hide from them that um, following Jesus, the things that they've been going through have been uh, extremely hard. He knows what it's like. Another thing that we see here is that Paul, unlike we are so often. Paul is unembarrassed to admit to the Corinthians that all of this was way beyond his ability to, to bear. He, he, he's honest about the fact that he, he wasn't really coping under the pressures. He doesn't say to them, oh, it was really hard, it was really difficult, but actually I'm such a strong, mature Christian that I just sailed through it and I had peace the whole way through. No, he doesn't say that. He says, in fact, he's rather honest and he says, at times we felt completely overwhelmed. He, he uses that idea, he felt, he said, it felt like we had been given the sentence of death. That feeling of being at the gallows, just waiting, like, this is it, this is over, We've, we haven't got anything more. And he's willing to be honest with the Corinthians about how that felt. But thirdly, I want us to notice that he's also not embarrassed to say, to say to them several times, that he has run to God for comfort and for strength, that he relies on God. He begins that way, doesn't he? In verse three, he says, praise be, praise be to the father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our suffering. And later on in verse nine, after he's been talking about all that they've been going through, he says, this happened so that we would rely on God and not on ourselves. And of course, you know, Paul, in one sense, was always reliant on God, and we are always reliant on God and need his help, even in the good times. But I think what he's saying there is that it's in times of great pressure and trial, um, like at the moment, it's, t it's in times like this, these, then when we know really clearly that we can't carry this by our own weight, that um, we realise afresh, we realise anew that we need God's help to carry this. That if, it's, if we're going to get through this, it's going to be God's strength. And maybe today <clears throat> we just need to be reminded, you just need to be reminded of God's invitation to lean on him. God invites us to lean into him and to draw on him. It's not weakness it's not immaturity to come to God, even if it's hour after hour, and say to him, I need your help, I need your comfort, I need your strength. Paul didn't feel like he needed to prove himself to God. He didn't feel like he needed to prove himself to others. For Paul, being a strong Christian didn't mean putting on a brave face. It meant letting God, letting Christ be his strength. And God loves it. I just want us to hear this. God loves it when we lean on him. Because that's what he's like. That's what our God is like. And I've, I've loved thinking about over the last few weeks, the fact that um, Paul gives these names to our father, to our God. He calls him the father of compassion and the God of all comfort. For Paul, he's come to know God at, as this is who he is, this is his character, this is his identity. He loves to hear us, he loves to meet us in our need. In Psalm 50, God says explicitly to us and to his people, 
call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honour me. Call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honour me. This, Paul has discovered, is the forever dynamic between God our Father and us his children. We are weak and he is strong. We cry out to him and he loves to meet our need. He doesn't resent it. He doesn't grow tired of it. He doesn't find it nagging. He loves it when we come to him. In fact, it brings him honour. Did you notice that? It brings him glory in our lives. It's our glory as his children to lean on him. And it's his glory as our father to be seen to hold us up as we do. And he will. He will hold us and he will comfort us. And I just want to say that this comfort is a completely different kind of comfort to the comfort that's available in the world and from other places. It's not the comfort of stiff upper lip stoicism, you know, I will be strong, I can make it through it, just, just keep going. Nor is it the comfort of naive optimism, oh it's, it's all not as bad as we think, or burying our heads in the sand. No, it's the comfort that Paul says that, that abounds in Christ, it's about him. It's all about him. Actually, it's the comfort of letting Christ bear the load rather than us. Letting him take the pressure of us, off us. Just like those, those columns I was talking about in the Sheldonian Theatre. Um, we, we can stand, um, in some sense, because we know we don't actually have to bear the load above us. Something else, someone else, is really carrying the load. What does this um, comfort look like for Paul in practice? Well, he talks about a couple of things here. He talks about knowing Christ's presence with him, and he talks about knowing Christ's power with him in the midst of his suffering. First of all, he talks about knowing uh, the presence of Christ in his suffering. He mentions in verse 5, um, that we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ. He talks about having a fellowship with Christ through the things that he and the Corinthian church are going through. And, uh, you know, the reason that we can say that Christ is sharing in our sufferings is because he chooses to share our sufferings. He chooses to make them his own. Uh, we are connected to him by his spirit. He he, uh, he is in us and we are in him. And he chooses to walk through these things with us. Um, we, we know from his life that um, we are not free from suffering, but we also know that he is with us in it. We know that we are connected to the one um, who knows what it's like. You know, he knows what it's like um, to be at the end of himself. He knows what it's like to literally feel the sentence of death over his life. He knows what it's like to say to our Father, I'm empty, I haven't got anything left, I haven't got anything more to give. And he, he's the one who knows this and he is with us through it. And he's working. Paul talks about Christ being at work in the midst of it, creating in us patient endurance. And um, I just want to ask, you know, have we have we taken hold of this promise of God's presence in this time? Are we, are we willing to draw near, give him the time to draw near to him? Have we sat with him? Have we asked him for his Holy Spirit afresh? Have we asked him for his comfort which he offers and given him the space? I know it's hard and, and I have to say I have found it really, really hard recently to find this peace and this presence with, with Christ and with uh, his spirit. I feel so distracted. I feel so many pressures. I feel every time I try and pray, a thousand things jump into my mind. But it is worth it. You know, one moment of knowing his love with us, one moment where he just is present with us, um, is worth a, a thousand, uh, a, a thousand moments of running around and problem solving and busyness, busyness and trying to sort things out. He offers, he invites us to come and, and, and draw comfort from him. Will we come and do that at this time? 
Paul certainly draws comfort from fellowship with Christ in his suffering. But the second thing that Paul draws comfort from is God's power in the midst of his trials. God's power in the midst of his suffering. Paul reminds us in verse 9 that the one that we rely on is the one who raised Christ from the dead. And that's a, a great link, isn't it, to Easter, which is coming up next week. And of course, it's a good reminder of the eternal hope that we have in Christ, that even if everything else falls away, we still have the ultimate hope uh, that, uh, of resurrection with Christ. But actually, Paul here points to something else. He points uh, as well to the, to the hope that this gives us in the present. He reminds us that the God that we pray to the God who's present with us, as we've been talking about, is the one who is able to deliver us here and now. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, he's able to, is able to heal. He's able to intervene. He's able to provide. This isn't just about mind over matter. And actually, although it, it is about this, it is also about more than just peace. And, and God's presence in a time of trouble. We Christians have a hope that nobody else does. And it's not about our own strength, it's about the power of God who is with us. We know the God who raised Christ from the dead. And so this, that's the second thing that we can draw on. And Paul talks here about prayer. He talks about helping one another in prayer, about calling on God to deliver through prayer. Are we taking hold of this hope that we have? We don't always know how and when God will deliver. We know that his presence will be with us through the tough times, but we also know that he can break in. And we are invited to call on his name. We are invited to invite, call on him to break into our situations. And Paul draws great comfort from the fact that God is able to do this. That is his hope, he tells us. And the final thing I want to end on and I want to remind us of is that it is this comfort that we receive from God. It is this presence and power of God that we have to offer other people in this time. Paul says in verse four, um, maybe you noticed this, um, he says that God will comfort us so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves receive from God. He will comfort us so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So if this is us, if we know the pressure right now, of feeling like we have to be strong to carry and support others, this is just such a good reminder. God doesn't expect us to do this out of our own resources only. He wants to fill us up with his strength and comfort so that we can bless others. And it's a reminder to me, it's a reminder maybe to us, are we trying to pour out of empty vessels? Are we willing to come to him first, to first of all put time in with him, to rest, to receive, to let him reset our perspective, to let him speak, to let him comfort so that we have something to bring to others? As Christians, we can feel great pressure to have the answers for people in this time. And we do have some answers. But I want to remind us that we don't need to be false columns for other people. We don't need to pretend that we're holding everything up. We don't need to pre pretend we have all the answers. We can say to people, we can freely admit, just like Paul is, is happy to do here, that our own hope and comfort comes from God. That's where that's where our strength lies. We can say to people, I might not be able to carry you, but I can introduce you to the one who can. Like Peter and John, we can say to people, silver and gold, I have none. You know, I, I, my stores of strength and comfort, they're going to run out. But that which I do have, I give to you. The name of Jesus. We know the one. We know the God of compassion and of comfort. And we, that is the offer, that is the comfort we have to offer other people in this time. Let me pray for us as we finish. 
Lord, we thank you so much uh, that you don't expect us to run on our own strength or rely on our own resources. I thank you that um, you just long to fill us and to comfort us. And Lord, would you help us to be quick to come to you, quick to draw on your presence, quick to hope in your power. And we pray that as people see that it is you, not us, in this time, that see your strength in our weakness, that you would you would have the honour, you'd have the glory. Help us to hold you out as the hope that people need in this time. Thank you for being with us today. Amen. Good morning, HT. I'm going to be leading us in a time of praying together now. What we'll do is this. I'll be leading prayers out loud and you can join in with what I pray. A few times I'll pause for you to pray out loud where you are. And after each section, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you can respond, hear our prayer. As we often do on a Sunday service, we'll be praying in three sections. First, we'll pray for our country, and second, we'll pray for our family and friends, including our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. And we'll finish with a third section, praying for ourselves. But before we do that, let's take a moment to gather our thoughts and turn our attention to our Father in heaven. Stuart's just been talking about how God calls himself the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. So let's take a moment now Close your eyes if it helps, and let's turn our attention to our Father in heaven. Let's take a moment. Father God, we thank you that you invite us to come and ask you for help. And we come before you together this morning to ask that you would help our country we pray that you would strengthen, lead, and protect our leaders so they can make good decisions, even in the most difficult of circumstances. Thank you that you always know what to do, and we pray that you would give them extraordinary wisdom and expertise. God of all comfort, we pray that you would comfort our country. We ask that you would come to the anxious this morning that they would find peace in you. Thank you so much that you said you were close to the brokenhearted. And we ask that you would come close to the grieving today and comfort them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of compassion, we pray for our friends and family this morning. We take a minute now to pray out loud for those who are particularly on our hearts today. Father of compassion, for those who are sick, we ask for your healing. For those who are lonely, we ask for your presence with them. For those who are under pressure, we ask that you would help and sustain them. For those who are worried about money, we ask that you would provide. For those who are struggling with the lockdown, we ask that you would give them patience and peace. And we pray for our brothers and sisters worshiping you all over the world today, that you would strengthen and encourage them. We know that many, many of our Christian family are meeting in secret today or alone because of persecution. And we pray that you would meet with them now in your power and love. Fill them with your spirit and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Father, we pray for ourselves this morning. We thank you for your wonderful faithfulness to us in every season. Thank you that you invite us to draw our strength from you and that you are utterly reliable. We bring before you the week ahead of us. We ask that you would help us 
with the decisions that we have to make and the work we have to do. We give you every conversation we'll have this week with family or housemates, with colleagues or friends, or with strangers. And we ask that you would use our words to bless and comfort people. We pray that you would fill each one of us today with your Holy Spirit again, that we might be full of your life, your hope and your power. We pray that you would teach us again what it means to lean on you and be comforted by you. Renew our strength, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And to close, let's pray for the Charcom family this morning. Lord God, Father of compassion, you are the God who heals us. Thank you that Ollie Charcom is now home from the hospital and recovering well. Please bring him quickly to full health, we pray. We ask that you would be close to Rupert on a ventilator. We ask that you, Lord Jesus, who sustains everything by your powerful word, would sustain and heal him. In the power of the name of Jesus, we ask that you would heal his body this morning and bring him back to full health quickly. Thank you for those who are looking after him so well. Would you sustain and help them? And we pray that all the while you would keep Rupert in perfect peace. And we pray for Liz and for Emily that you would show them new depths of your comfort and peace. Uphold them and surround them, Father God. We commit this family that we love so dearly to you and your keeping. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of our service, but before we go, I just want to draw off one thing that Stuart said, and that is just for us to learn to draw comfort from God, to depend on him in both the good times and also the bad, because he, he will never let us down. I'm going to finish our time together by asking for, for God's blessing. So may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen.